World Solar Challenge is, is kind of, uh, it's, it's called the Formula One of eco-friendly motorsports. So you race from the top of Australia to the bottom, and it's uh, 3,000 kilometers, or 1,600 miles. And you do it entirely unsupported, apart from your own team. And, you know, you're going through the middle of the outbacks, so you'll pass through maybe two major settlements in that whole time. You have to take everything with you. And, you know, if that, if that wasn't, like, enough of a challenge, you're actually building the vehicle that you use to do that. And it has to run entirely on, on sunlight. If you look to our car, you might be a bit confused, actually. It, lo it looks like kind of, like, like a, a small, like a baby spaceship that hasn't quite grown up yet. It's, it's quite tiny and only, only seats one person. So it really, it really looks a lot like a racing car. The, the technology inside the car that is, that, that is you know, maybe transferable to what you'd see outside is, is stuff like the intelligent management system we've got inside. So the car is actually constantly thinking, uh, you know, how can, I, how, can it, how can it drive itself more efficiently? You hear about people these days who try and do some hyper -miling and get more mileage out of their, their, their car and, you know, go, go the length of the country in a tank of petrol or whatever. I mean, our car thinks about that because we've, we've, we've developed systems, we've, we kind of, we put a processor inside the car that keeps thinking about that, takes the load off the driver. We've got hold of a really low power like uh, Atom uh, processor and it means we could, we could put kind of a little bit more smarts in the car. For a lot of the time the driver's just steering and making sure we don't hit things and the car is really thinking about, you know, dealing with hills, dealing with changes, weather conditions and really making, it, making sure it drives efficiently. But in the past we had to compromise because you didn't have the energy budget to, for, to let the car think. You had to kind of send it by radio, the radio would cut out and you'd have a, a big car like driving along a big truck full of kind of uh, a whole stack of, of almost like desktops that we kind of like jerry-rigged to, to run in the back of a truck and it did all the cr number crunching but now we can do that in the car. We spent eight weeks designing the first car in 2009 to a kind of level where we thought it was you know pretty good and then in about 24 hours we improved the performance by I think it was it was nearly nearly 10 percent it's like nine point seven percent on a design that we'd spent you know the whole of last year design the, the previous year designing. Obviously we, you could never buy a cluster just for a, a student team but the possibility of kind of just having some time on it and just sending our work off to do it and then coming back and then you know, using that to inform our own design processes. You know, the time when you need like a bigger, a bigger hammer to, to get around a problem. That's the one thing that puts us ahead of the other guys. And no one else can use an HPC cluster at the moment because they all still think you have to buy one and you know, their university's not going to get them one. And luckily we've, we've got to Intel first and, and, and done that. So that's where we can build on it in the next two years. So now it's about turning up with a really smart design, really spending, you know, the full two years that you've got thinking about your design. And for us, as a new team, that's actually, that's what we want to hear. Because we can, you know, we can spend two years thinking about something and Michigan and, you know, Tokyo can spend two years thinking about it. And we've all spent the same amount of time. So if we work harder, we can do better. We are a very, very young team and we're just, we're just bearing the fruits of a lot of the work over the past two years. So I think this year, we definitely, we're definitely turning up with a car that is, is top 10, and you know, a lot of it's the luck of the draw. In 3,000 kilometers, you can hit a kangaroo, and that's it. You could have spent, you know, all your time, like, you know, designing this car. So it's like, the fastest thing on earth. Um, but yeah, you hit a kangaroo, and it's all over. So there's, there's an element of luck and an element of chance. And, and we are definitely an underdog. Um, but give us, give us two more years. Keep us on the path that we're going, and we can, we can really turn up with something special.